Ron Hamelman. He's an EMP expert. He's a member of the InfraGuard EMP Special Interest Group and FBI Partnership with Private Sector, a member of St. Louis FBI Citizens Academy Alumni Association, a member of Impact America, a member of Manchester, Missouri Community Emergency Response Team, and an Oath Keeper pledging to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I was hoping the fact that uh, the FBI and all that wouldn't scare people away because, you know, we're all here on the same side trying to uh, prepare in case anything would happen. But anyway, welcome Ron Hamelman. Thank you. I'm going to pass some handouts here that I'm going to be referring to throughout my own presentation. No. Um, well, I'm Ron Hamelman. Actually, I'm a resident out here, not far from here, about a mile and a half. <clears throat> Been an uh, old keeper for a little over a year. Um, I firmly believe in defending our Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and to support the, uh, the ten rules of, uh, um, of uh, not obeying various orders, as you know. So my background, i uh, give you a little information here. Uh, by day, I am a professional uh, registered investment advisor and a corporate retirement plan specialist with a major uh, banking, investment banking group in the country. Um, and by evening, I assist a couple task force groups that assist the uh, FBI in monitoring threats to our infrastructure for the country. Um, I got involved with the St. Louis uh, Citizens Academy in 2007, and that organization is basically there, comprised of uh, leaders in the community that assist and support the mission of the FBI. Uh, some of the things we've done is uh, fingerprinting children, providing ID kits, and uh, assisting the FBI in some of their uh, projects and events. Uh, through the Citizens Academy, I got involved with InfraGuard, which is a, a, a alliance with the corporate sector and the FBI to help share information, intelligence uh, that uh, helps protect our <coughs> nation's infrastructure. And there's about 14 or 18 different categories, uh, including where I'm mainly connected with is the banking and finance area, so assisting with cyber information, cyber attack, uh, cyber crime, uh, areas like that where we've helped the banking area with monitoring these kind of threats. And uh, there are the nation's dams, the water supplies, the medical, the agriculture, all these areas need to be defended. And uh, there are a lot of in, uh, folks that devote their personal time and try to uh, help share information. And I got involved with the electrical power grid, I guess, uh, by uh, my interest in looking at various reports about what an EMP is and what damage it can cause. So, how many here are, are familiar with electromagnetic pulse? Okay, the word has gotten out because I can tell you back in 2007, 2008, 95% of the country no idea about what an EMP is. Now, how many realize what kind of damage can be done from electromagnetic pulse? Okay. So I'm not going to be giving you a lot of new information on the threat, but basically there's two ways that our power grid can be taken down, <coughs> which we would not want, because if that happened, we would be instantly back in the pioneer days 
nothing can run without power, and uh, we would have huge, massive death if we were out of power for <coughs> months or even beyond that. So um, the uh, EMP Commission was formed in 2001. I've met several of these people. They're very, very well-known experts. Uh, Bill Graham, who was the chairman of the EMP Commission, uh, formed and got a group uh, of which Dr. Peter Fry, who put this presentation, I'll give you some background on, put this together um, to get the word out on what an EMP threat is and what it can do to our power grid and our way of life. The commission reported to Congress in 2008, and through that report, which you can get online, um, they summarized the threat, the expense, all the damage that would be caused if our power grid was uh, brought down. Through other reports, I've just uh, I've seen studies about the impact of electromagnetic pulse on the uh, area of Richmond, Virginia, Washington, D.C. That 500-mile radius uh, that would encompass huge amount of, uh, we're talking billions of dollars of damage if uh, an EMP were uh, set off in that eastern area and massive death. So groups of people got together and started promoting uh, the education, especially with our politicians, about threat of EMP and the damage that it can be done. The um, special interest group that I joined with InfraGuard uh, had a lot of help from uh, Dr. Peter Vincent Pry and a lot of other contacts that he knows that went formerly with the NSA and the CIA. Um, So we, we have tried for five years to pass legislation through Congress to get laws enacted that would bring our electric power co companies together and get our grid protected with surge arrest or surge protection and um, the way to do that. So. What we're trying to bring out is what are we doing about this? Because the threat is real. It is a clear and present danger. The um, laws that we've tried to have passed starting in 2010, the GRID Act was brought out. Uh, the House of Representatives unanimously passed that legislation, which would have funded the power companies and help get a plan in place to get all the necessary backup equipment and, and plans to um, um, bring emergency preparedness and be able to withstand an EMP attack. The GRID Act narrowly passed, or nearly was not passed, excuse me, uh, in 2010, one sitting senator did not pass that bill. Had that senator passed the bill, we would be perfectly fine right now. We would have things in place that would ha have our grid protected. The following year, 2011, the, the GRID Act failed again, and then the SHIELD Act was put together to uh, try to go to cover some of the areas that the GRID Act were, was missing, especially again focusing on funding with government funds. The SHIELD Act, same thing, passed by the House and uh, did not pass the Senate twice. 
So there's four attempts where legislation was not put in place. And then finally last year, the, the uh, Critical Infrastructure Protection Act, CEPRA, passed the House, did not pass the Senate. So it is on the national level, our congressmen and senators have failed us. We're not getting anywhere to bring protection to the grid. So with that, Dr. Pry put together this initiative to run by the states. And uh, he is, uh, besides the director of the uh, task force on national and homeland security, he's also uh, served with the uh, House Armed Services Committee and CIA. But he has put together a very, I think, excellent white paper that I presented to Governor Nixon, which has fallen on deaf ears. Over a year ago, I presented this and showed what other states are doing. The state of Maine, for instance, they did pass resolutions and bills to protect their state their, their own electric grid against the uh, EMP threat. So Maine, Arizona, Virginia, Florida have all taken the initiative to do something on the state level rather than waiting for the national level. So in this paper, he does outline what the threat is. Now an electromagnetic pulse can occur from a uh, severe <coughs> geomagnetic storm. Disruption comes into our atmosphere and disrupts our electric uh, transmission systems and anything connected to the <coughs> grid. On page five of this handout, he points out that on July the 22nd, we had a narrow miss of a superstorm that came by, came through, narrowly missed. It would have been on the same magnitude as what happened in 1859. We had the Carrington event. This was a massive coronal ejection that was observed by uh, uh, English astronomer uh, Richard Carrington. And they recorded this event which ended up, it was pre-electrical days, of course, but this solar storm that came through Europe and the United States was so powerful that it did fry the telegraph equipment on the other ends and electrocuted and started fires. So there was damage that was recorded. And this mist that came through in July of 2012 <coughs> could have been on that same scale, but luckily it, it did not pass through. Mm -hmm. uh, Quebec had a power outage in March of 1989 from a solar flare that came through. They were out of power for nine months, or excuse me, nine hours, and then followed in August of 89 the Toronto Stock Exchange was closed and trading halted because of another solar flare that came through. So you have the natural geomagnetic storms and then the other way is of course from a high altitude nuclear detonation. Um, now we know of course Russia and China have this capability of launching missiles over directly central United States and causing an EMP attack. Don't discount North Korea and Iran because both of those countries do have access to nuclear warheads. I don't care what anybody says, Iran does. They would not launch an attack like Russia or China would. It would be by surprise and there's two ways they could easily do this. 
All you simply need to do is mount a Scud missile on a rust bucket cargo ship, mount it with nuclear warheads, mm. parked 30 miles off our coast, and I've seen threats, plans of 10 simultaneous launches, five on each coast, two down in the Gulf, that could actually go undetected. We have no defense against vertical launches. And if you set 10 of these off at one time, it would collapse the entire grid. So that's one way that could be done from just launching from a cargo ship. Iran has already demonstrated their capability of launching missiles off of cargo ships. And of course, North Korea, they have their submarine fleets that could do that as well. Uh, there is also another stealthy way that, uh, that missiles could be smuggled into the United States, and that's through the Russia um, Club K missile container system. Has anybody heard of that? Freight containers, four missile silos built inside these things. We don't inspect every container that comes into the country. China's in charge of one of our ports over in uh, uh, California. So this is a very easy way that nuclear warheads could be smuggled in just through containers, shipping containers. Uh, but you can Google that. And I think <coughs> Dr. Pry points that out as well. Um, the other thing, too, that is a danger is that Iran and North Korea both have satellites orbiting over our country right now. On page six, Dr. Fry shows the orbital passes of a North Korean KMS 3 2 satellite to April 2013. And you can see these passes that come through the uh, eastern part of the country. Who's to say that one of these is not armed with a, a nuclear device? And all they have to do is just bring it down and set it off over our country. Iran launched satellites. They've got two up there, and so does North Korea. On page seven, there is the EMP threat by sea, cargo ship. Actually, North Korea did have uh, a couple of missiles smuggled under tons of sugar. This happened in July 2013 down in Panama. Um, North Korea's freighter Chong Chan Gang carried two nuclear capable missiles on launchers and they were <coughs> uncovered coming through the Panama Canal. Besides the uh, EMP through nuclear detonation as a threat, you've also got physical sabotage and you have cyber. The uh, sabotage was cited here. Um, go back up here. <clears throat> yeah, in April of 2013, there was a commando style sniper group that. Uh, actually attacked the Met Metcalf uh, in San Jose, California transformer substation. And I don't know if any of you remember that, but a small team did know exactly what they were doing and they, they, they hit cable equipment that knocked out the power in that area in the uh, 
Silicon Valley. Of course, we had uh, terrorists blacking out Yemen in June 2014, attacking nine transformer substations. On page 10, this is the uh, altitude diagram that will give you an idea how high up a high altitude detonation uh, would be to cause the damage we're talking about. But if you're over central United States and up 30 <coughs> kilometers, which is about a little over 18 miles up high, you would hit that circle area and knock out the grid in that area by a detonation of 18 miles. So the higher up you go, the more line of sight, the, the more coverage is, is felt. So the entire country where you're at 300 <coughs> kilometers high, 186 miles, this is, this is again, the capability of Russia and China. The first strike could knock our, our grid out. But again, remember North Korea and Iran have satellites orbiting right over our country. They come from the south. We have no missile defense system to protect against the southern incoming. It's all northern is where the territory is covered for um, any incoming missiles, not from the south. So basically, you know, what are we doing about this threat? Besides, yeah, exactly, the Congress is doing nothing. However, it takes us to constantly holler at our congressman. I do this all the time. I just get on their website and I go to their contact page and I let them see every EMP article that I come up with. I've also communicated with the St. Louis County Emergency Management Agency commissioners and the St. Louis City. They all know about the threat. They all don't know or don't have a plan in place deal with it if we were ever hit with an extended power outage. I cannot get meetings with Amory. Does anybody have any contacts with Amory here? <laughs> they won't tell me. They will not confirm that they are protecting our power grid here in Missouri. Cyber, yes. They have all these cyber uh, plans in place and they, they, they have that covered, but they do not have anything covered for an EMP event. <coughs> Pardon me? What about Cooter River? Have you ever tried contacting them? I have not. I have not. So it's a matter of, again, picking up the phone, getting on the internet. Now, the, the senators in the House of Representatives, congressmen, they're pretty easy to get a hold of by internet. You just put in their last name, dot house or senate, dot gov. Brings you right to their website, you go to their contact page, and there you can fill out a form and, and uh, send them, I send them all sorts of stuff, clips, articles, and I make my own letters up. They get it. I mean, I've gotten responses back. Some I didn't like, but they still do see these. So the more people that do this, you got to keep that wheel squeaking. So it's it's folks like Dr. Pry and volunteer task force groups. We're all here to try to get something accomplished, and that's to get our grid protected. Um, it takes a little money, but if Ameren had to pass, or any electric company had to pass on a one-time surcharge 
five dollars per year per family one time boom it's only a two billion dollar I say two billion not trillion two billion dollar fix for the entire country 300 million for the main 300 transformers to get rigged outfitted with surge arrest or protection these transformers are made overseas and it takes two years to build so that's one of the problems so they've got to gear up for extra equipment on hand and parts because if they try to put one of these stations together it's a two-year project if we got <coughs> things going right now in place to get everything going to bring our power companies together it would still take two years to get this done and like Peter Price committee we're running out of time because it, it is a matter of time before something is going to happen so um, sure bring together as in on the same page not to make one thing jack up yep yep the um, I was going to say, and I'm sorry, I'm under the weather. I'm at the end of this two-week cold. I've had coughing and blowing my nose, so um, just trying to remember all of my points I want to make. Uh, but you can feel free and read through this and get a lot of information of what the threat is, examples. This has all been laid out very nicely, and what uh, other states are doing about it as, as I said Maine is going to be the that was the first state to take any initiative to protect their own state the city of Elma New York it's south side of Buffalo this is where impact America was formed from a businessman that owns a food company there but he has actually gotten their town completely off the grid. They, I mean, they're self-supportive. They generate their own power. They all take classes on how to can, how to form, how to grow, how to defend themselves. Uh, this is probably the most protected city in the country against any kind of a natural disaster. Which one is this? Elma, New York. Elma. Um, yeah, uh, Henry Schwartz is the individual, by the way, uh, a lot of the information I have gotten came from an organization called Impact America, and that was formed and started by this Henry Schwartz, and then he knows a lot of high up people in the government agencies, and he recruited folks like Dr. Pry to put together information on educating everybody about EMP. And if you go to impactamerica.com, now behind tab two, I have uh, just a little page on their mission. There are a lot of videos and reports that you can pull off of that website that explain the EMP threat and what people are doing to help um, get our grid protected. Yes? On a smaller scale, <clears throat> as individuals, what can, what can we do to protect our electronics and our batteries and our vehicles? And I have heard to use a microwave to stick things inside, yep. an old microwave. Yep that will protect the laptop's mm -hmm. batteries mm -hmm. or car batteries or whatever? Well, um, a Faraday cage is a term you've probably heard of. Yes. And, and they're quite easy to make. A real simple, inexpensive makeshift one is you get a, an aluminum trash can and you put a, a plastic liner in, keep the lid very tightly sealed, but you can put things inside that, that trash can. That will help shield against uh, EMP. <coughs> Microwave oven is another good source. You can put your cell phones or laptops or anything in a microwave and that'll shield. Should those, should those be grounded or not? Because I've heard both. I've heard both. Yeah. I've heard think, some, though. No. What do you think? I, Are you going to ground yours? Mine is not grounded. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. 
My my Faraday cage. Is there sufficient warning time to get stuff like that in line? Okay, on if we have a solar flare eruption coming from the sun, three days is what they say we'll have a heads up. Did we get any warning about what came through just in July of 2012? No, none, zero. So, yeah, first, a lot of people heard of that. We got no <clears throat> nothing from the government. Now, Missouri, the state of Missouri, uh, State Emergency Management Agency, claims that they would notify our city of St. Louis and county emergency management officials. Well, they never heard anything about that potential threat that came through. So, how will this affect our automobiles, uh, like both short term and long term? Well, the EMP emitted from a solar flare is less damaging, not as severe as a nuclear detonation. Mm -hmm. So, I have seen reports and studies um, that basically your car batteries, uh, your, 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 if, if it's, your, your dashboard is so uh, made up of electrical components, they would all be fried if your car is on. If your car is not or parked under a garage, you might be okay. Um, but if you're actually in traffic, that's where I've seen everything stops. And it's permanent, it'll be permanent. And I mean, it'll no, try, it'll be permanent. No, well, they, 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 it's been hit and miss. Okay. Some of the studies show that the cars were rendered uh, useless, but after several hours could actually start the ignition zone. So we don't know. <laughs> so we don't know, right? Yeah. Don't know. And then with a book called One Second After. Well, and I, I got, I got, I was involved for a couple of years, daily or weekly conference calls, with these high experts, including uh, Bill Graham or not Bill Graham, uh, Forston, uh, yeah, uh, Bob Forston, and yeah, he wrote that book giving an, an idea of what could happen after uh, our country's hit with an EMP. And he's very interesting to listen to. So He's got a good website that gives a lot of emergency preparedness tips. Now you ask what can we do? That's one thing I would definitely be doing is preparing. Like you would for any disaster. You've got to have your emergency preparedness kits together. I've got one in, in all of our cars. And, um, you know, your supply of food, long-term shelf life, water, or access to purification methods. It's really all you can do. Um, and, and try to be able to survive long enough until help comes from the outside. And that's what I would not be counting on. So besides trying to get this fixed, it's have a backup plan B is all we can do. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So go ahead. Well, well, you were talking about nationally search protectors. So in practical purposes, <coughs> we're going to be using our computers and our cell phones, and we're not going to be putting them in a third cage or a microwave or whatever. But like our home, is there search protection or things that we can do for our home that would be individual level versus citywide level of protection? Well, I, 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 I would say that, you know, you just have to have your appliances disconnected. <laughs> and you're not going to know when that's going to be. Right. So no, you, can, you can go off grid. There's some very expensive systems that will run your mm -hmm. home off the electric grid. Right. But I don't know, those systems still have electrical components right. and they still have to tap into a source of electricity, and that's what could be fried. Let me get this gentleman in the back. He's been waiting. Okay. Well, referring back to ham radio, 
Yes. I don't know as much about EMPs probably as you do. I don't no. think the risk is for your battery. It's more for the electronic, the so radio yes. itself. Yes. So if you've got a nice big long wire antenna in the air, which we like to use for ham radio for long distance, and it's connected, your ham radio itself is electronic and at risk. You could have a spare, but how an about EMP the, can. How about the repeaters that are up, um, right. That some of they're constantly they have power Some of those are backed up with generators and such, but one of the reasons we try as a group to practice simplex, which means radio to radio no with no repeaters, is because they could likely go away too. <laughs> so if you're relying only on you and your friends and neighbors and others and Absolutely. they have battery powered on <coughs> radio, solar maybe, charging up the battery, that's a good way to go. So you recommend unplugging the antenna when you're not using it? Yeah, and that's good for lightning protection too. And they make some fancy surge protectors and such, but it would be even better to disconnect them when you're not using them. And if you can have two and have one of them tucked away in a in a Faraday cage, mm -hmm. that would be even better yet. Mm -hmm. okay. So then the EMP is somewhat selective then. And he says it won't hit the batteries, but it will hit the system. Uh, I mean, is that so, will it target transformers and that sort of thing more than it would the system? It, I mean, is there it, it, it will target anything within a line of sight of where that detonation takes place. And it just will, it just disrupts anything that's connected electrically to the grid. Now, uh, the batteries I'm not sure about. That's receiving power. Yes. So if something's unplugged and then... Right, you have it right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I understand. Yes, sir. You said you had three days on the solar? When they, when they see this coronal mass... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If you know, you, you don't have any advance warning on that. No. Once that once that vertical launch takes place, and I'm talking about a simple submarine or cargo ship, you have no notice. And they don't have any way to bring that down, and it's too late at that time anyway. I have another question. I've noticed the upgrading of a lot of our emergency management systems. They went to vocal warning systems yes. versus just a siren. Are they ready? Are they, or were they uh, vulnerable to the same thing? Or do you know anything about that? Well, the, I mean, the systems are connected to power. So they have if, solar. Uh, you know, this, that, this, this surge that comes through, so it's a nanosecond. It's so quick, you can't stop it. And it goes through, it travels through any lines that are out there, electrical lines above or below ground and uh, there, there just is no warning there's no way and, and yeah that that would be affected there, they would not be able to transmit if, if uh, I know they're all kind of unified now because you can hear them going on yeah I mean those are those are storm warning systems they're for tornadoes and hurricanes and that sort of thing <coughs> it's not made to withstand an EMP attack Yes. Are there some common myths that people believe that you would like to point out? Myths? Just basically misconceptions about the NPs. Well, the I think there there it, there was. I'd say again, this education process was started seven years ago, and more and more people are aware. The problem we've had is the politicians believing that an EMP won't happen very small likelihood that we would have that happen as an event. That's one myth because that's wrong. It can happen now. Well, it's going to happen twice in one instance. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, other than that, Is not believing that it can happen. So nothing else? Nothing like misconceptions about how to keep things safe, really? Mm. 
Well, there's there might be misconceptions on the on the amount of damage, like what things will get fried, what things won't. But as a general rule, anything that's unplugged and off and not connected, it won't be damaged. Um, now, your your cell phones uh, are constant. I mean, if they're on, they're subject to <coughs> that pulse coming through and. Yeah. Yeah. Computer, same thing. Yep. That's true. Yeah. So, if we were to prep for if any of the, what would be some of the best things you would recommend that we have on hand, whether we double up on or have just save? Well, besides food and water, you know, yeah, you, 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 you've got the main main things you we may want to have <laughs> besides the normal preppers. Think of anything. If you're a camper, I mean, think of anything that you can use. Yeah. Well, You're going to have all this, yeah. all these things in your house <laughs> anyway. Well, I'm, I'm talking about size, just the generic prepper stuff. I mean, there's electronics like having a second ham radio is unplugged oh. in a Faraday cage. Well, the ham radio is that I am interested in learning how to use ham radio and what that's all about. I, I bought the book and Come to our next meeting. I'm looking through it and I'm going, oh boy, what are Ohms doing here? I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a technical guy, but uh, I do see that. Having a means of communication is going to be, that's going to be paramount. If we have an event like that happen, you're going to need to communicate somehow with somebody on what's going on out there. Well, even if we don't need to, it's nice to know if you can talk to the guy in the next city and he can talk to the guy yeah. in the next city, you can yep. find out what's going on across yep. the country yep. instead of being sitting here. You might have plenty of food things. and water and food and water, and but protection. home you defense. You don't know what's going on in the You've got to have a way to defend. <laughs> home, home defense, yep. food, water, clothes. Another question. Um, is a good way to test your Faraday cage? I've heard this. I don't know. Maybe you know some methods. Is to take your cell phone, put it inside the microwave, and call the phone. And if it, if it signals, yes. is that a good Yep, uh, well, I've heard that. I yeah. have heard Do that. Do any others? I mean, is there? No, uh, I have not. Uh, I mean, what was the question? On how to test your Faraday, Faraday cage or your microwave <coughs> uh, <laughs> by putting a cell phone in there and calling it to see if you receive a okay. signal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I've, I, like other than that, I don't know what else. That might be synonymous with what how things travel yep. electronically. Yep. Definitely, I've, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. I tried that and the phone rang inside the uh, microwave. It did. Today was yeah. the first time I ever picked up a signal in the walk-in at work. All of a sudden I started getting a text and I'm like, I'm in the walk-in. I've never, I usually when as soon as you walk in, you drop a call. But yeah. how about like, a, I don't know how it found me. How about aluminum foil? I've heard you could wrap things in several layers of aluminum foil. I did, I have, I, I have a, um, a solar generator and it came in a wooden crate box and I made a Faraday cage out of that wooden box. I simply lined it with aluminum foil on the inside completely and covered it then with a layer of aluminum screening and you got to make sure you have your your edges all sealed mm -hmm. well but that's all you need aluminum foil aluminum screening and that will act as an insulation. I've heard of leakage. Yes. Leakage concerning an EMP that if it wasn't grounded and there was a break in the cage somewhere. It could it, it could, could filter in, it yes it could. But cooking. who's tested that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have made, they have done some <coughs> tests of equipment like that. I mean, there are companies that make this, these Faraday bags. You can buy them. And uh, they're, they're, they're out there on the market. So if the power's down, power's down, power's down, power's down, all these are just temporary fixes. The Faraday cage, everything. Yes. Because, yeah, because once my battery's dead, it's dead. I can't yeah. charge it any longer. Yeah. The only thing yeah. I've got is enough solar. time to basically it's contact the people that I need to or have solar backup. Or, or have solar backup. Yeah. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But other than that, <coughs> you're pretty much 
Well, well and, and you think about it, if everything's down and, and a lot of the major right. equipment's down, how are you going to make any calls? How are you going to get on so the So the best internet? thing to do is to prepare for the dark ages. Yes. Yeah, a lot of yes. How do your so grandparents and it's, it's right grandparents mm -hmm. live? I was mean, yeah. hoping to see like what we should have. He so talked that would be really good. Doc had a, a similar uh, speech about this uh, about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and there was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. And when they when they pull their Humvees up to where they're stationed at, they actually drive a six foot rod, uh, copper rod, and ground it into their Humvee. So they plug it into their Humvee, and if there is like an EP. This is again like you don't know if it's going to work. They say it's going to work, but it's grounding. It's, it's grounding. grounding. Yes, and he's saying you could do this to your house. Mm -hmm. um, you basically you got your small ground wire, okay, that goes in everyone's houses, goes mm -hmm. down into the ground. Yep. Basically, you replace that little tiny wire with you know inch copper wire. You know you'd have to redo your, your circuit board, but then run down the run the six foot copper uh, six foot copper into the that's your but again, if everything's out, your house is not going to have electricity anyway. Right. It's yeah. All you're doing is saving your stuff right. from what? You're not going to be able to plug That's it in true. anyway unless no, they get the electric get that going six months, seven months down the road. Yeah. And you got to hang on that long. Exactly. So Food and water. Yeah, be my stuff's cool. not fried, yeah. Yeah. but at the same time, I, there's no power. <laughs> you can push the buttons. Dump your so funds more into yeah, the it's next more, it's more about funds than anything. I'm saving money, you know. If it didn't get fried, well, yes, sir. Uh, I'll come explosion, back. Explosions, explosions go down. Will the satellites be affected uh -huh. if they ever got? Well, the satellites have been affected from solar flare, magnetic mm -hmm. storms. Yeah, I'm talking about a nuclear. One. Nuclear, uh, it's it's well, it's line of sight, so. You know, it, it is an explosion that's going all directions, but it's coming down where Gravity. the electric force is or where our, our atmosphere is. But if there's a satellite within close enough proximity, oh yeah, it would definitely be, it would be effective. Well, they'd be hanging up there. Nobody communicating with it. And eventually, if they ever got it up, then yeah, well, from a community standpoint, uh, he mentioned the ham radios, uh, the portable ham radios. Mm -hmm. um, there's batteries called in loops. They stay charged for 10 years. They can be charged 22,000 times. A pack of 12 costs like 20 bucks. And they make them in double A and triple A, and you can keep those charged in a microwave for a backup radio or whatever. At least walkie talkies or something, because you need to communicate with your friends, right. nothing else. Right. Um, and then you get a solar. That is a good point. And you get a solar power charger, and have that for standby, whatever. But you will need to communicate. I've seen those little camp stoves can where you, they, you, you start your fire inside the camp stove. And there, and, and there was a Kickstarter company that made a salt water charger or a unit that could be laid in a butt babbling brook and it actually would charge a, a laptop and a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So there are some things you could have because you really don't want to go back to the dark ages That's if right. you can yep. as long as you can. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what did you say that was a battery called in loop? In loop. Uh, Panasonic makes them, Sanyo makes them, uh, a lot of companies make them and they're on Amazon. I have a solar powered backpack that has a battery that basically is charged by the solar panel or AC DC and uh, it, it'll charge laptops, my cell phones, any electrical devices. It, the last thing on the end loops, they come in, like I said, double A's and triple A's and then they make these adapters that you can slide the double A into and use C cell battery flashlights and D cell. Mm -hmm. And they will work. That's a good point. So, because yeah. you need flashlights too. So, so yeah, anything, 
emergency gear, common sense. There's so, so many lists you can <coughs> access on the internet for emergency preparedness to get run down everything that you gotta have on hand. And I would especially encourage you to have that kit in your car trunk, in your family's car trunk. If you're ever out and we are hit with an EMP event, you're gonna need to get home somehow and you gotta have your kit with you to to get by. That's and save your hand tools, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have read ep excerpts of it, um, but it is a very good book. Bill Forston. Is it, is it realistic what, what we're going to look like if it happens? Oh, yeah. It's, it's very realistic. Yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, his, his scenario shows how a community comes together and what they have to do to work together and survive. And they yeah. ate their they ate their dogs. <laughs> I, re I just read the book, they, they, ate, they ate their dogs. Sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. terrain. Yes, sir. Predictions followed up after EMP, like, let's say China or Russia, or do you think they would just let us attack and kill them? Okay. okay. So it sounds like a lot of damage, yeah, but I, one of these EMPs, I, I, do they follow up at all, or do you think? Well, well, for one, I know China and Russia are not our best friends, and I don't think that they would intentionally strike first here and cause an EMP and crash our grid. I think that would happen with either North Korea or Iran first before I would worry about Russia and China. Mm -hmm. There's too much trade that we have between us that uh, I, just, I just don't see them trying to upset the apple cart, but who knows, anything can happen. Um, it's the rogue states, the rogue groups that I worry about that 
They have no conscience. They do this to us in a minute. And you also know that there are terrorist cells in our country. We have 35 terrorist training camps operating freely in our country. Now, some of the things the FBI, I get pissed about because they do nothing. Maybe their hands are tied, I don't know. But they do nothing to bring these groups under control. I get the hell out of our country. I, don't, I just don't get it. But they use our laws, they hide behind our laws mm -hmm. to operate. And if there's ever an EMP attack on our country, well, you can just imagine what these terror cell groups are going to do. Mm -hmm. They're just waiting for that day. And that's why I preach home defense and Second Amendment. Amen, brother, you know. Well, they say in World War II, Japan didn't attack us because we were a well-armed country. Well, that, that's right. And I do worry about where groups are trying to take us. And yeah. I'm not going to let it happen, just like I know you won't either. But there's only so much we can do. I'd like to say something about the website. We have uh, videos on the website, which this one will be posted, um, and Hyatt on our website if you want to know about prepping. He was in California when the grid went down for two weeks, so he gave us a, a short presentation of what really mattered in those two weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, he, the neighbors had a pool, so they survived off the neighbor's pool water, mm -hmm. but uh, he got, gave a lot of helpful hints of what you can do to prepare or what you can have to pass off to other people just to keep them off your back or to help somebody. So that's, that's yep. a good thing to do. Do you remember the ship that was blacked out in the ocean? Do you remember where that was? One of our ships? <coughs> one of our best battleships? It was over in the middle. Last April or the April before? Uh, it was a year or two back. They had a, a Russian fighter jet do a flyby and they got very close to a U.S. naval ship that was supposed to be one of the most sophisticated ships in the Navy, <coughs> and they completely and utterly blacked them out. Dead in the they water. They were completely couldn't dead move, in the water. Couldn't communicate. Yep. And there were several Navy personnel on that ship who resigned, officers. They resigned yep. their commission. And when they came back the up, they mm -hmm. went immediately into port. Scared the hell out of them. <laughs> yep. So, I don't know if that was EMT or what they were doing to block them out. Well, Russia because and China both have these EMP weapons that are designed to do just that. Right. Fly by and hit a burst well, that's and then a that's a test. What knock, can happen? knock out. But so if you have your best military that's dead in the water. I mean, the military has been hardened for a long time, but there's still weaknesses there because yeah. there's new technologies that All come out. Time. Yes, ma'am. So, if I heard you correctly at the beginning of your talk, it's mostly the senators that are dragging their feet? For legislation, the GRID Act, the SHIELD Act, the uh, Critical Infrastructure Protection Act, five attempts, all passed the House. The House Energy Committee has to get the bill going. And once they bring it out of committee, they bring it to a House vote. In every case, they have passed. They have done their job. They have passed those bills. Like last year, the House passed the Critical Infrastructure Protection Act. The Senate, it didn't even get out of committee. It died. Now, here's the problem. Every time, it's always at the end of the year. It's always in November and December. They never get it. They don't do anything to get this out and to a vote. Then you got to start over the process entirely every year. So this year, I don't know where it is, but there is um, a website that you can track these bills and find out where they are in process. But senators like Senator uh, Trent Frank out of uh, Arizona, I mean, he gets it. He sponsors these bills. But it's frankly running out of steam. Instead of attacking it on the national, bring it down to the state. What this petition did was it put this on Nixon's desk 
And rather than going through bringing up through the committees to pass legislation, that takes too long. That's a year or two, maybe three, to get that done. Our suggestion was executive order. Here you go, Governor Nixon, and it's outlined in here. Here's a sample executive order you can fill out. Your secretary can fill that out and get it passed and done. So Nothing to state. wait for. For our state. state. Yeah, for our state. Yeah, I'm trying to get Missouri protected. <coughs> and that's where, if you know folks in other states, and you can get this paper to them to present to their governor, they have a chance to protect their own state's grid. But you said Dr. Nixon refused to be in. Is that what you said? Well, I <coughs> sent him my package, my letter, last April, last year. Followed up with a phone call to his assistant, oh, three months afterwards. <coughs> they did send me a letter. He's reviewing this with Missouri's Homeland Security Division. Okay? I called back two months ago and asked where they are on this. Nobody knew. Um, couldn't give me any answer as to who was looking at this. I'm still waiting for them to call me back and give me some update. And I said, okay, well, I guarantee you that I'm going to keep calling whoever dies first. I'm going to keep calling and get an answer because I want to know if we're doing anything at all about this. It's a simple fix. So would it be helpful if the rest of us bombard his email and his oh, yes. office phones and, yeah. you know, It's like anything like else. That. Yeah. I uh, sent a, a letter into the St. Louis Post Dispatch editor outlining this exact scenario. It's in the hands of our governor. And they published my letter. I was glad about that. So you gotta take action and you gotta do it. You either gotta make things happen or you watch things happen or you wake up and wonder what the heck happened. Right. My favorite saying. Okay, yeah. Right. Uh, Wednesday, April 13th, you walked our governor's office right there in the Capitol building to play in person to it. <laughs> and all your representatives and your state senators are right there. Bring yep. us with them. Yeah. What's <coughs> April 13th? I'm sorry on the date. Gun rights rally. Gun rights rally. Oh, okay. All right. There you go. That's good a good thing. You can talk to them about Very good point. Exactly. I'm going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll bring us with you. There, there's a geomagnetic storm at a sea meet. We've got the three days notice. Do you think the, the public is going to be notified, or do you think the no. that's right? Do you think not? No, no. I don't. I don't think the public's going to be notified because we weren't notified when it nearly missed us. So would there be any advantage of going like on the NOAA and the solar? There's some sites that track geomagnetic storms. Is there any advantage to like going on those or would that or would they try to shut those down? Too? I don't know. There's, I, there's a gentleman that tracks it every day. He puts a YouTube out at 5 a.m. every morning. Who's that? Conscientious objectors. Or objectors. Conscientious yes. observers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> Hit that and then just subscribe to your YouTube. And yeah. get that <coughs> he shows all this solar weather. That's that's a good point. But I, I would say though, I, you don't John Q. Public getting the word. No. It's it's going to be. I we may see our emergency management responders get the word first because that's what they did tell me. Missouri SEMA. But uh, yeah, we won't. But they're going to have to get their forces in place to deal with an extended out outage and what to do. You know, what, what, what will they do? St. Louis didn't have a plan, and neither did the county. And that was three years ago. And I haven't heard that they really got a formal policy in place for this kind of an event. So, yep. Okay.
thank you for your time and I hope you came away with a few bits of good information and uh, keep this handy and we'll, we'll keep plugging away. I hope we do get Missouri protected. So.